Howdy. This is Kevin Stoda with you on the porch. Um, I wanted to share with you an article I've been reading uh, from uh, April's uh, Time Magazine, April 20th to be exact. And it's about the serious issue of plastics. Uh, as you know, the uh, petroleum companies are are getting wary that our usage of petroleum will go down over the next 20, 30, 40 years. And they're already uh, pretty bent, hell bent, I guess you'd say, on moving to the plastics arena and making sure that chemical companies are creating plastics. Now, uh, this article is about penguins. At first, it starts out with penguins. And it's entitled uh, plastics at the end of the world and that's a double entendre because we're talking about the fact that too many plastics are already in our system uh, we've had had a 60-year love affair as it noted in the article with plastics and um, a lot of them are getting to the bottom of the food chain and working up through the system probably poisoning us making us unhealthier and all the animals in between uh, the article is by Erin Baker, and she's on uh, Snow Island in the uh, ocean around the Antarctic. As penguin researchers working in some of the most remote regions of Antarctica, conservation biologist um, Alex Borowitz uh, documents colonies on uh, coastlines and islands that have rarely, if ever, been in visited by other people. That doesn't mean that they are free from human impact. Walking through a beach teeming with newly hatched chicks on Snow Island, Borowitz uh, spots a white plastic milk jug. Farther along, he picks up a tangle of bright green rope, then a faded fishing buoy. We like to think of Antarctica as a pristine wilderness, but it clearly isn't, he said. Over the course of six expeditions, aboard a Greenpeace research vessel earlier this year, Borowitz and his fellow scientists collected approximately three metric tons of garbage from Antarctic beaches. Marine scientists working on another Greenpeace vessel in the same area detected similar levels of tiny uh, shards of plastic floating in the surrounding waters, most likely shed by larger items that broke down over time in the waters. Called microplastics, they are the enduring legacy of humanity's 60 year love affair with a material that is cheap and ubiquitous and lasts forever. That doesn't mean it lasts in good condition. An estimated 8 million metric tons of plastic debris ends up in the world's oceans every year. If the current rate continues, scientists estimate that there will be, by weight, more plastics than fish in the ocean by 2050. Let me read that again. If the current rate continues, scientists estimate there will be, by weight, more plastic than fish in the ocean by 2050. According to oceanographer, Antarctica is surrounded by a current that should protect it from any spillover from the Pacific Ocean. The fact that the plastic debris is still present indicates either gaps in the natural barrier or that the and fishing vessels and cruise ships flying the region are responsible. It would be difficult for something like this to float down from the Pacific, says Borowitz from a different beach a few days later, as he examines a yellow boot stamped made in Poland. Antarctica, he says, is nowhere near as bad as some of the beaches he has seen in the Pacific, but it's still worth thinking about. Here at the end of the world, where there are very few people, we still manage to dump a whole lot of trash in the ocean. For their part, the penguins seem unperturbed by the junk scattering uh, throughout their nesting grounds. But the long term, plastic in the ocean poses a great environmental threat. As plastics break down, they release chemicals such as bisphenol A, it's called BPA, that can cause health and development problems for marine life. Plastics also absorb other toxic carcinogenic, carcinogenic uh, pollutants from seawater. When marine animals uh, mistake scraps of plastic for food, they become 
a rapid delivery system for poisons into an animal, which can then make its way in, up the food chain, eventually ending up in fish that we humans are eating, says marine scientist Chris, uh, Kirsten Thompson of the UK's uh, University of Exeter, who identified the microplastics in the water on the Antarctic expedition. In a worrying sign for Antarctic life, Borowitz has started finding bits of plastic in bird boluses, lumps of undigested food that birds regurgitate as part of their feeding process. And at this point, I want to remind you, 8 million metric tons of plastic debris end up in the world's ocean waters every year. Very little of it goes to Antarctic, but still, 8 million metric tons every year. And it's going to increase. Plastic production is expected to rise as countries turn away from petroleum products to power their electrical grids. Fossil fuel companies are betting on plastic industry, which uses natural gas and petroleum as key components. The International Energy Agency predicts that a growth in oil demand related to plastic production will overtake that for road passenger transport by 2050. Yet less than 14% of the plastic worldwide is recycled. Less, I'll say it again. Less than 14% of the plastic worldwide is recycled. The rest ends up in dumps and far too often the ocean. In the Antarctic, our organizations like Greenpeace are trying to trace plastics back to the polluters so they can be held responsible. A similar effort would be all, all but possible in the Pacific but with so few bases and boats in Antarctic, they have a chance to identify the culprits. Most of the items recovered from the expedition from old fishing nets to a boat fender the size of a minivan are likely linked to the fishing industry. But the scariest thing Borwitz says is the stuff they didn't find. We didn't vin visit a majority of Antarctica yet. We managed to find this much, this many metric tons of trash over the past six weeks. There are a lot of other beaches that we haven't explored. Who knows how much trash is out there? Yeah, um, the Trump administration has been going gung-ho on uh, pollution, promoting it uh, through reduction of EPA guidelines, uh, enforcement, and uh, oversight. We need to reverse this immediately. We need to have much more stringent laws about uh, and use of plastics before it's produced. We need to make some uh, changes in how it's produced, make sure it is recyclable plastic. If not, why are we producing it? We cannot put that much junk in our oceans without damaging ecosystems badly. And the fishing nations along the Av Coast, of course, are concerned about it, but the rest of the people who are far from the coast don't seem to care at all. I think. Uh, Caring is the first step. Second step is to demand uh, enforcement of the laws that are already on the book. And next, uh, put money into policing uh, the plastics and add regulations that really help to recycle if they're going to produce uh, plastic. Otherwise, they should use some other material. Uh, and I would finally say that this is an example of, of a worldwide problem that each individual nation won't solve by itself, but by working together in groups. Again, uh, the current administration here in the United States has been working against uh, working with other nations, and this won't get us further. This is an area where the U.S. and China could cooperate quite a, quite a bit. Um, and so we should have grounds or reason where areas where we can cooperate with all countries in the world, and we're not looking for them right now. We need to. Uh, we do this for the sake of ourselves, our children, our grandchildren, for the earth. Um, look at the coronavirus that's already out there. That demands also cooperation around the world, and there's a lot of plastics involved in the health industry. We need to uh, really look at that and what else other designs we can make or changes in designs in our whole system so that we can have holistic health as the focus uh, for medical care, and that would include uh, being able to lobby against uh, having more plastics around that, that hurt us. We need to have empowerment of people, 
uh, worldwide who can be given the right to demand and get acted upon their demands to protect their beaches, to protect their seas, to protect our ocean, to protect our fish, to protect our penguins, you name it. Thank you for listening to the Stoda channel and uh, liking us. All right, have a good day.